Hey guys, what's going on? So today I'm gonna visually explain and implement five geometric concepts and equations that are super useful in video game development, simulations, and animations. Now, some of these geometric concepts may be already familiar to you, but you don't really know how to actually implement them in code. So in this video, I'm going to simplify these concepts and I'll show you how to implement them using Python. If you see this channel for the first time, make sure you are subscribed, it's absolutely free, and you can always unsubscribe if you don't like the content. So without any further ado, let's begin. Measuring the distance between two points in the 2D or the 3D space is a very simple thing, yet it's a very important. The most common solution to this problem is using this Euclidean distance formula. Don't be intimidated just yet. This is the general form of the formula. However, the one you will be using looks like this. We subtract and square the x and y coordinates of the two points and then apply the square root to obtain the distance in the 2D space. If you work in the 3D space, you just add the coordinates corresponding to the z-axis. Implementing this is super easy. Just declare a function that takes the two points coordinates as a tuple and calculate the px and the py terms that corresponds to the difference between the x's and the y's of the two points. Then you just return the square root of these terms after squaring them and adding them together. Orthogonal projection is another useful concept. Let's say for some reason you want you to calculate the coordinates of the orthogonal projection of this point onto this line. The first thing to do is to calculate the equation of the orthogonal line that goes through point A. In this case, since the angle formed by these two lines is 90 degrees, then the slope of the orthogonal line will be equal to minus 1 over the slope of the other line. And the line equation will look like this. B can be calculated if we substitute the point A coordinates in this equation, and we end up by this result. Since, the, since we have already the equations of the two lines, we can use this formula to find the x and y coordinates of the orthogonal projection. Implementing this is straightforward. You just need to assign the point coordinates and the line equation parameters as arguments. The line parameters of the orthogonal line are calculated as we said earlier. And then we just calculate the x and y coordinates and return them as a tuple to be used later. Let's say you want to rotate a point A around some other point C in this 2D space. Let's go first with the simple case when C is in the origin. We assume that the point A already have an initial rotation alpha which is almost always the case, so the coordinates of A are calculated like this, where L is the distance from the center of rotation. Now if we wish to rotate A with an angle beta, then the coordinates will look like this, where alpha plus beta is the overall rotation. But normally you don't have alpha, I mean you just want to rotate A and uh, you don't really care about any initial rotations it might have. This problem can be avoided by using some trigonometrics. The second case, where the center of rotation is in another position than the origin, then you would want to translate the point A like this. Then we perform the rotation, as we have seen just now, and then translate A back, and this will give us the correct rotation. Now implementing this using Python is easy. You just have to import the math library in order to use the sine and the cosine functions and then declare a function that takes the center of rotation, the angle and the point A as arguments. In this function we will assume the general case of C not being in the origin, which will cover the other case as well. Like we said, we translate A by subtracting Cx and Cy from Px and Py. Next, we write the rotation equation and we translate the result back by adding Cx and Cy to A. And finally, we return the coordinates as tuple.
interpolation is an amazingly useful trick if you want to move some objects between two positions or if you want for some reason to create some intermediate waypoints or anything like that. This is gonna be useful if you are working on a video game, animations or simulations. Basically, it allows you to create a point in the line segment between any two positions by using this formula, which is the formula for a 2D linear interpolation. The position of this point is controlled by a parameter alpha. When alpha is equal to one, the second term of each equation becomes zero and the position is set to the end of the segment. In other case, where alpha is zero, then the first term becomes zero and therefore the position is set to the beginning of the segment. And when alpha takes a value between zero and one, the position will change accordingly. This is useful and frequently used in many disciplines, especially those that involve motion. For example, I had to use interpolation expressions in order to make this animation. As for the Python implementation, it's straightforward. The line equation of the straight lines have many representations, the most common of which is the slope intercept form that is defined using the slope of the line and its intersection with the y-axis. Another useful representation of the straight line is called the general form, where three parameters A, B and C are used. This type of equation is used a lot in the fields of robotics, simulations and animations because it helps with representing the vertical lines, where the slope intercept form just fails. And it also gives you access to various formula and methods that simplify some tasks, like finding intersections, for example. You can translate any line in the slope intercept form to the general form by following this simple method. Move all the terms to the left hand side and then make sure to verify these conditions. The first one signifies that all the parameters have to be integers, and that means that the values that have a decimal point are not allowed. The second term means that the A parameter is not allowed to be below zero. We begin by multiplying by six. This step will remove the denominator from all the parameters. The second condition obliges us to multiply by minus one and that will make the line equation satisfy all the conditions. And finally, we get the general form representation with the three parameters equal to 10, minus six and minus seven. The implementation of this method is not so complicated. The first step, as we saw in the explanation, is moving the terms to the left of the equation. That means that the A and C parameter sign will be inverted. Then we make sure A is not negative, and if it is, we inverse the sign of all parameters. The next step is to satisfy the condition that constrain the parameters to be integers and not fractional numbers. This can be easily done by multiplying the equation by the least common multiplier, aka the LCM of the denominator. Since the B will always be integer, we don't have to worry about including it in the LCM calculations. The first step is to transform the A and C parameters to their fractional representation, and for that we need to import the fraction class, and then create an instance by passing the A parameter, and then we limit denominators to 1000 and we return the fraction as a tuple of two integers and finally take the second element of this tuple which corresponds to the denominator and the same thing is done to c the lcm don't have a dedicated function in python but the gcd does which is the greater common divisor so we will use this formula to calculate our LCM. And finally multiply the parameters by the LCM and return the result. If this video is helpful to you in some way, support the channel by subscribing and also leave a like and share with your friends. All I have left to do now is to tell you stay safe and see you in another video with another idea. Goodbye.